Welcome to another episode of Celebrity Surf Series. Today we have one of the most legendary race car drivers in the world. He's won races in Formula One, NASCAR, IndyCar, sports car. He's won the Indianapolis 500 twice. Please welcome Juan Pablo Montoya. We got to keep you in good shape, man. If you know what you're doing, it makes it look really easy. Like yeah. driving. Yeah, yeah. There's no secret to driving. Ask him. I say the same thing. I don't thing, believe yeah. it. It's really easy. Yeah. When we get a little further, it'll get a little deeper. And you need, if you're really close to that, it gets like to seven, eight feet, and out here is a little better. No! You oh. We're in Miami. We got Juan Pablo Montoya on his Mastercraft X24. He's gonna show us how to shred. Let's go. I'd say that was the first solid attempt right there. We're getting him loose for his race this weekend. We're going into the pits, doing a little board change. Is that your go-to board? Yeah, Just because it matches the boat? I hadn't thought of that, actually. <laughs> Making it look easy. Boom, baby. Juan Pablo Montoya showing us how it's done outside the track and on the wave, behind the boat. You could say uh, he's really speeding to the top of the wake surfing industry. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, a little like three pin. Is that style? like what you use? Or? Yeah, I would say it's like a hybrid because it's got three Yeah, it's got some fins on it, yeah. It's but definitely it, a skin Like for me, we, I lost about two seconds on this. So all, with that, all your control is going to be really on your um, your back foot on that toe side rail. So slam the back foot. That's where a lot of your control is. Yeah? All right, I'll try. We can get into the spin yeah. and make it, but we'll never come out of it. That's the hardest part, is yeah. riding away from the trick. That was a really good first attempt. The steepest part of the wave is closest to the boat. Yeah. So sometimes doing that 360, it's better to uh, Do it try it out. a little bit further back because then it's less steep yeah. and there's less chance of you catching that rail. Yeah! That was a 360 right there. <laughs> Let's hope that's the only spin out we see from Juan Pablo Montoya in the future. That was perfect, man. I've done that, yeah. but I just can't stay in the fucking way. That looked good. All right, Juan. Thanks for coming out in the boat. Or thanks for having us on your boat, I should say. <laughs> no worries. Anytime, thanks for being man. on the Celebrity Surf Series, taking the time to come wake surf and shred with us. You've been so successful in racing, uh, one of the most legendary race car drivers in the world. Like, What does it take to be a successful, not just a race car driver, but what kind of mentality does it take to kind of become a champion from your point of view? And as a competitive person myself and an athlete competing to me is fun but also one of the most stressful things to do i can't imagine racing which would be the like the top of yeah the most i mean it's even. stressful and no i mean it's stressful because you know i mean in the heat of the moment everything but you know when you're well prepared and you know what you need to do it's it's not so bad uh, for me is i keep telling people is how badly you want it you know if you want it more than the guy next to you and you're willing to go further than the guy next to you there's a good chance you're gonna get it yeah and the, I, I think I saw a quote uh, in an article of you that you said it's not about being nice it's about going in to win yeah I remember <laughs> Chip Ganassi told me once you know you don't you don't come to the truck to make friends if you wanna if you want and you have any friends bring them with you <laughs> is there a fine is there a fine line between uh, going in with that mentality but also being having some type of racing etiquette or no it, it, one thing it's been you know racing to win and the other thing is just being dirty 
And you know, what I mean, I think there's a you know a competitive uh, ethic, you know, where you wanna know how far you wanna push it and everything. You know, what I mean, it's not okay winning because you wrecked the other guy. It's okay winning because you went inside the other guy and you maybe bang wheels and you beat him. Is there any times in your career that sticks out to you that you kind of push those limits? Um, yeah, I mean, in NASCAR, they they, they pay backs. Yeah, you know I mean, when somebody wrecks you, you go out there and you just wreck them back. And, <laughs> Woo! Uh, Yes, whatever. That's, that's gnarly, man. Yeah, it's it's that that's the that's the racing mentality yeah, there. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? It's and that's what you are allowed to do. Hey, that was a sick run, man. That's not bad. Heck yeah. It's like having a wetsuit. You see, it gets cold and then it gets better. Oh yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! All right. Are you kidding? What the fuck? I was trying to pick up the How the hell? Energy when it gets shallow, trying to poke the wave. Yeah. You do. We stop. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the legend himself, I'll take it. Oh my God. You've won the Indy 500 two times. Yeah. Which is an insane race to win, and the first time you ever did it was as a rookie in that type of racing. Is there any advice or anything you would tell somebody uh, that's look that's going into like a high caliber? Uh, performance as a rookie or crossing over within their sport you know you crossed over in your yeah, sport yeah. many times wake surfing in a, in a way is a crossover for me yeah in the surfing and skimboarding background so what advice would you give somebody a rookie that's looking to cross over or uh, perform at a high caliber in a new area in their sport? Uh, honestly don't be afraid of asking questions uh, you know people are always more open to help you than you think for sure uh, and I've learned that the hard way uh, and honestly, like I tell people a why, lot of time, why do you say you learn that the hard way? Because uh, I'd rather not ask a yeah, lot yeah. of times and people were like, well, you could ask me. <laughs> yeah. And you go, oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, I tell, you know, Sebastian look at me sometimes like I'm completely crazy because if, if he has a doubt or anything, I'll go somewhere and just ask. I don't, you know, what's, I tell people, what's the worst thing they're gonna say? No. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? very true. And, yeah. and if the worst thing it's a no, the the plus side is huge. So in your career today, have you started taking that advice or do you yeah, even have I to, give. are there even questions that people, you ask honestly, at this point? Yeah, I do, there's, yeah. you know, I mean, you always want to be, you know, you always want to be better. Yeah. And, and I feel with racing and it's You're asking me a couple thing. of questions today. Yeah, yeah. exactly, but it's the same way, you know what I mean? I think the day you you feel you know have anything else to learn, that way you're gonna go downhill and that way, you know I mean, at that point your career is gonna stop. So, so even at this point, you still feel like you're learning more about racing? And yeah, I still feel a lot of times I suck. And that's and that competitive, that yeah, competitive yeah, I mean, drive, it, right? Yeah, it's like, you know, you're doing well. No, 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 Wales when you're winning. So it wouldn't be a episode of Celebrity Surf Series one Without. if we didn't go double. Well, we're gonna go goofy side. That's okay. <laughs> For you, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get out standing on the board? So just the idea is just practice like keeping the board under your feet, just without the rope, just keep it there. And then when the uh, when the rope starts pulling, you just make sure that the board's kind of pointed up so when you start moving, it comes out of the water. It sounds like me driving and explaining to somebody. Yeah, it's really simple. <laughs> I'll start on the outside. So okay. you just get normal, don't think yeah. about me. If you can, stay as close to the boat as you can. Yeah, and then I'll fine. have room for me.
So when you start working with some of the top people in the racing industry, like Roger Pinsky, like, uh, how, does there more pressure to, to perform? Um, and how's the environment I think when things start es yeah, getting to that level? For me, the pressure is always myself to, to try to get the best performance uh, and be at, at my highest level and the best preparation you can. I think that's going to be in your hands, not, you know what I mean? First of all, to make it to a team like that, you know, a McLaren or a Penske or a Ganassi or Williams or whatever you want to call a top team, the reason you make it there is because you already have that. Yeah. If you didn't work hard and you didn't perform, they would never even look at you. So it's about being prepared, feeling confident and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's more what you do for yourself, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? How you prepare yourself, how you approach it. You know, you, you, how you work through the weekends, how you do everything. And, and that kind of translates to what I do, like here, what you said today. You know what I mean? It's like, I see you doing something, I need to try that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I need yeah. to figure out how to do, do it. you feel like it amplifies, like, your resources a little bit, too? And you almost feel, like, more comfortable because you're working with a better, um, higher caliber team? or It, it helps. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I mean? I've been with big teams, small teams, and at the end of the day, it's more about what you bring to the table and what you can get out of the people that work with you. Okay. You know what I mean, it doesn't need to be a, a Penske to win. It can be a small team, but if it's a group, you know, a great group of guys that are willing to go further than anybody and work harder than anybody, you will get the performance you're looking for. You're coming up, huh? Yeah. Doing some kart racing and stuff? Yeah. I, last year I did my first season in cars. Yeah? And it was really well. No way. Yeah. How does that make you pretty proud or what? That's stressful and proud. <laughs> the desire to race is just running the family, or is that pressure my from dad, dad? I grew up racing because my dad raced. Yeah. And he grew up around racing, and he always wanted to do it. So okay. it, it's hard to say no to, you know what I mean? It's like a lot of the dads that the kids, you know, that you grew, I grew up racing with, they said, oh, I would never let my kid race. We got Sebastian, the son of Juan Pablo Montoya himself, out here showing us how to shred behind their Mastercraft X24 in front of the beautiful Miami skyline. Try to really bend your back you gotta, knee. So like, try to sit down into your knee. Okay. Like this front leg can almost be extended and the back knee is just like fully bent. It's just a, like driving six tires in the wet. Oh yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> Accidental 360, what? Nice job, bro. Thanks. Yeah. There it is. Oh. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> So how'd you even get into wake surfing? I used to wakeboard years and years ago here in Miami. Okay. When I raced car back in the day behind the jet ski and everything and and the kids got finally got big enough that they wanted to start, you know, go, started going wakeboarding and everything. And we got with Mastercraft and, and we got a couple of really nice boats. So Nice. Uh, this is unbelievable. In a nutshell, that's how you started shredding behind the boat at that level then, huh? Yeah, I mean, we started. The problem is when you have kids, you, you end up being in the driver's seat all day. And, and you I, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Yeah, that's, that's what happens here. when but you have kids. It's got to make you feel good about it when he's out there shredding. Just yeah, the, pro I, the problem is I'm a little competitive. So I was just gonna say, is there some competitive energy there on the behind the yeah. behind the wake? 
Yeah, yeah. Like, and surf, uh, I still got him on surf and wakeboarding. He, he can kick my ass. He can jump, you know, wake to wake, no You're problem. You're killing it out there, sea bass. I'm going to start calling sea bass. Sea bass, yeah. <laughs> That's how I call him, too. <laughs> That's funny. I like that you guys call, dad calls son Montoya, and then son calls dad Montoya. Yeah, we do, actually. <laughs> is that just like a family thing, or is that no, a No, no, it's just a, no, the two of us. Okay. I That's don't know. Cool. I just started, That's dope. Yeah. I noticed that. That was cool. You're a competitive animal, my friend. Yes. And it's no wonder you're one of the most legendary race car drivers in the world, and Thank that's you. where you focus your energy. What caused, what about racing caused you to focus your energy into that? Like, you could have been a, a professional RC plane racer. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. My dad honestly raced go karts, and we got into karting, and I was pretty good at karting, and it just kept growing. Which uh, I'd like to talk about too. Sebastian, your son, is into karting, has now just told me he's transitioned to cars. into cars, which has got like to be, as you said, a little bit scary but also a proud moment and does does the r racing run in the family i'm assuming yeah yeah he's very good i think you know i mean i i tell him actually you can he'll see, I'll, I'll, i'm gonna love his reaction because yeah. i'm gonna tell him he doesn't understand how good he is really and i keep telling him like, how does that feel to coming from not only your dad but also like the a lot of people that, legendary like, race car driver in the world man yeah like it, the past few years have been difficult for me and just like recently like everything just started clicking and like when we're at the track I see him as my coach like I see him as Juan Pablo I don't see him like Juan Pablo Montreal he's my coach he's the guy that I know so I have to learn from him and then the other day after the race like I felt good I felt that I was actually fast and that I, I'm good at this like damn like I got this <laughs> and when he said that I'm like damn like yeah, I can do this. Like, <laughs> I, if he says I can do it, I can do it. And you're feeling good about your transition to cars now? You're feeling confident? Yeah, since ever since I was little, I said that every time I go faster in, into like a bigger car or anything, I go quick. And it's, I think it's true because in December, I tested a bigger car and I was quickest in the test. So, yeah, it's just a matter of time. Well, I think it's clear that the uh, Montoya legacy is going to be running strong in the future. Yeah, and uh, we'll have another future Indy 500 champion, Formula One champion, who knows? Do you have a, do you have like a dream race that you would like to win? It's funny because people ask me, I'm like, no, like whatever my dad did, I'll, I'll just beat that. Like <laughs> he's the benchmark and just beat that. What and do you got to say about that? And, and we're so competitive at, at everything. Like everything we do is a competition. You're going to keep him racing until he's 90 years old, man. All right, we're here in Juan Pablo Montoya's warehouse, AKA man cave. This is where he keeps all of his RC planes, helicopters, go-karts, mountain bikes, ping pong table, rock climbing wall, dirt bikes, trophies, helmets, everything. Racing, Formula One cars, pace cars from the Indy 500 that he won. Everything has a story. Every little thing I point to, he has a story to tell me about it. What's up with that? What's the story on that uh, piece over there on the wall? The destroyed one, that's actually the same car. The good side and the bad side, that was my first cup wreck. No way. Yeah. They cut the side of the car and they send them to me. That's the winning car for Brazil, 2004. The two pace cars from Indy. When, I, when you win, they give you the pace car. These are the two pace cars. What year was that one again? 2000. <laughs> it's crazy the change in pace cars. Huh? I know. <laughs> what? What's the story on like all these different helmets? Is it like... From Formula 1, from winning the 500, there were years where you keep changing helmets or you know, special wins and stuff. Where's the helmet that has the straw and holds the two beers on the side? <laughs> I don't have that. That's a, that's I'm, I'm this is actually my first win in Formula 1. It was actually what? the week after 9-11. We didn't spray the champagne. Oh, no way. So it's pro the, probably one of the few Formula 1 champagnes that have never been sprayed. Jesus. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm looking upstairs with the planes oh as well. Wow, this is super sick. Thanks for showing us around. Yeah, no man. worries, man. Well, you know, the cool thing about the Montoya legacy is it, it extends beyond just racing. And I hear that you do a lot of really great stuff for the community back in Colombia, especially yeah. kids in particular. Yeah, we've done everything. We, you know, we used to do a lot with the foundation in Colombia with kids and sport and everything. Uh, you know, nowadays it's a little harder, but. We, you know, we, we looked at the community. Uh, I coach quite a bit of kids, actually, Colombian kids in cars and karting, and uh, it's fun. You know, I think it's, um, I try to give back as much as I can and uh, see what happens. That's awesome, man. That's uh, what makes a, a true champion right there is giving back Thank to the you. community and uh, making it extend beyond what your, your passion and, and your talents are. That's, a, that's rad. 
Thank well, thank you. you so much for having us, hey, dude. No worries, yeah. man. And uh, hopefully we'll be on the boat again soon. I hope so. I need to All learn right. some more tricks. Juan Pablo Montoya, is there anything you want to promote? You got a race coming up this weekend? No, it's okay. We're running Daytona 24 this week. Uh, this year, actually, is pretty exciting. I'm going back to the Indy 500. I'm doing, you know, if you had like a Are dream calendar. Are going for a three-peat? Yeah, I hope so. Well, Let's go. You know what I mean? I don't think you could go to a race like that thinking you can't win it. You know? yeah, yeah. If, if you couldn't think you could win it, you shouldn't even be bothered going. Okay. Um, should be fun. Anything else you want to promote? No, sir. All right. Well, Juan Pablo Montoya, thank you for coming out. All That's right. another episode of Celebrity Surf Series. <laughs>